that by being concerned about having enough capital uh, to meet deposit requirements. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, welcome back to the channel. It is, let me see here, February 22nd. I knew that. 21st. February 21st, 2021. Um, we're going to talk about a couple of things here real quick. Wanted to touch base with my audience. Um, today, I did a video, recorded a, a, a Skype discussion uh, with a guy named Alexander from the Free American Press YouTube channel. Uh, not sure exactly when that video is going to be up, but it was a very good discussion. Look out for that uh, in the next couple of days. Um, Skype has actually really stepped up their game, I guess, since Zoom has come out and a lot of people have been using Zoom. Uh, on Skype now, the, the video and audio quality is much better than it has been in previous years. And uh, not if, if somebody records the session on their end, the other person actually has access to that recording and then you can download it. Um, so we'll see if Alexander from the Free American Press says it's okay. I might actually post... It's like an hour-long discussion about Bitcoin. I give my reasons why I don't think Bitcoin is actually going to be able to be money. Um, and, you know, we kind of make the the bear case for cryptocurrencies. And we talk about some other things. But uh, look out for that in the next couple of days. Um, it is Sunday night as I'm recording this video. Uh, real quick, too, uh, before we really get into this. If you do enjoy my channel, if you enjoy these videos, please do uh, give the video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet, um, and, and I want to thank the new subscribers out there. Uh, but more than that, leaving feedback in the comments section really helps the videos. Um, so you know, let me know what's going on in your area. What do you see? Um, you know, what what is the economic state that you think uh, the nation is headed towards based on what you're seeing in your in your local areas? Uh, I think that's the best way we can really you know, gauge what's actually going on is by communicating and speaking with each other. So your feedback is greatly appreciated, uh, not only because it helps the videos, but, um, you know, it, it definitely helps me to gather more information. Uh, so thank you to all of you that have been leaving comments and, and feedback. Uh, you can follow me on social media and uh, links are all in the description down below. All right, let's just go over some general um, prices, uh, you know, what's going on in the markets right now. Uh, the indexes, you have the futures up a little bit right now. I think the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ are all slightly in the green. S&P is up uh, about 0.1% as I'm recording this video. Uh, commodities, crude is right under $60 a barrel. It's at like $59.60 a barrel. You've got um, gold and silver. Uh, the it seems like the the ratio is actually uh, decreasing a little bit here. Um, gold is still under eighteen hundred at seventeen eighty six. Okay, so uh, I think this is a good thing. You know, it does make gold a little bit more obtainable uh, than it is when it's closer to nineteen hundred. Uh, silver though, at twenty seven dollars and 56 cents right now it's up about 1.29 percent uh so this will be interesting to see you know will silver continue to kind of hit closer to 30 while gold stays in this um you know 1800 to, to upper 1700 range uh, let me know what you guys think about the gold and silver ratio where is it going in the week ahead according to trading economics the u.s is releasing the second estimate of q4 gdp alongside durable goods orders personal income and outlays and pce price index so we've got some uh economic information being released this weekend. Germany, France, Switzerland, India, Hong Kong, and Mexico are also going to be releasing uh, you know, Q4 GDP info. Uh, we got UK jobs report coming out. You know, when, when we talk about the economy and when we talk about the economic crisis and the economic collapse that we may actually be facing, this isn't just an American issue. You know, this is something that people around the globe uh, can relate to, can understand. Um, 
And, you know, I, I know I, I sort of focus on, on the American markets, the American job market, but uh, this is going on across the Western world, no doubt. Um, but, you know, this week we will be keeping a close eye on those jobless claims that are coming out on Thursday. You know, what's it going to be this next week, right? Are we talking 800,000, 900,000? Um, last week was not good at all. It was over 800,000, way past expectations. The week before that, they originally said it was 793,000 new jobless claims were filed. This was two weeks ago, and that number was revised a few days later, and it was well over 18, uh, uh, well over 800,000. Okay. Um, on top of that, that same week, I believe this is about two weeks ago now. Uh, um, uh, the Fed Chairman Jerome Powell made some public comments about how unemployment is not 6% or 6.3%. Uh, there's no way it could be that low. Uh, Fed, Jerome, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said that unemployment was probably over 10%. Some people think it's as high as 15 to 20%. Uh, I know there's estimates out there that say it, it could be 40, 60, 80 million people uh, unemployed. You know, when we think about the uh, uh, sort of the new employment, you know, it's a lot of service industry jobs, a lot of gig working. Uh, is somebody that's scraping by and making, you know, $16,000 a year driving Uber, it, should that be considered employment? Uh, so, yeah, the, these numbers, uh, I, I don't think we'll ever actually get to the, the heart of it. I don't know if we'll ever actually get to the truth of these numbers. But when we think about the American jobs market, uh, it, it's possible – trying to center myself a little bit more here. It's possible that well over, you know, we're losing well over three, four million jobs a month in this country, you know, for 11, 12 months. And, uh, you know, th this is not being negative. This is just being honest and realistic about the situation. This, this is, you know, just a, an honest look at, 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 you know, potentially what we could be facing in this country, potentially what could really actually be going on. You know, people want to talk about how high the markets are, how, how high cryptocurrencies are going. Uh, but, you know, the real economy, just based on the jobs number alone, right, the jobless claims, the Dow Jones should be dropping a thousand points when this information is released. And it doesn't. It actually goes up. It, it's as if, you know, uh, there isn't a care in the world out there. Um, I think the situation is getting dangerous, but I think it's engineered. You know, I I said this in the the podcast that I did with Alexandra from the Free American Press. I said that you know when this thing comes down, all right, all of these millennials that that have bought into the hype, that have bought into the Tesla hype, the crypto hype, um, and it's not just millennials; it, it's it's now Gen Y and Gen Z, um, but. When it comes down and when a lot of this boomer money in the equities starts to liquidate and they start living off of their money and, and you know um, the boomers start selling, when it all comes down, it's millennials. It's my generation and younger generations that are going to be left holding the bag. Uh, and I do think a lot of this uh, economic turmoil, collapse, whatever you want to call it, is uh, engineered. It's, it's, it's uh, you know kind of by design. Uh, speaking of, of, you know, engineered catastrophes, what we're seeing in Texas, I mean, you know, people are now going on a week uh, without power, without running water, people melting snow uh, just to have water. Uh, I saw an interesting video from uh, Arcadia Economics. It's kind of a silver bug channel that I, I like to watch, but this guy's in Texas. I think he's somewhere in Houston, maybe. Uh, and he, he took video, right? The, the entire state has pretty much lost power. But he, he actually took video of uh, J.P. Morgan, Chase, Banks. Uh, their lights are still on. Their ATM lights are still on. Um, and some of the government buildings still had the lights on. You know, Meanwhile, citizens, uh, completely without power, no real sign as to when some of, this, some of the power is going to be turned on. Uh, I, I thought that was kind of interesting. You know, we have heard of the power outages in California. This has been going on for a couple of years now, uh, you know, surrounding the fires. But we're now seeing major power outages in Texas. And this is not the first time that Texas has had a major winter storm. Now, it, it's not, you know, it's not the place I generally think when, when, when I'm, you know, thinking about snowstorms or 
possible mass wide power outages due to uh, a cold weather. But nevertheless, you know, this isn't the first time that Texas has faced something like this. I can't help but wonder if, um, you know, the weather is more of a, uh, a, a justification for turning off the power or having massive infrastructure uh, failures. But nevertheless, it's very serious. It doesn't matter exactly, you know, why or how. What matters is that this is serious, and I think it's uh, the 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 mass wide power outages in Texas are foreshadowing what I think we're going to see across the nation, right? And not just America, but probably across the Western world. Okay, um, but but in North America, you know, I, I do think we can expect to see more massive infrastructure failure. Okay, whether it's by design or or neglect, whatever, it really doesn't matter. I. I'm just um, uh, uh, sort of making a prediction here. Okay, I could be wrong, but but I've been talking about this for a while. Um, you know, every time I, I try to talk about uh, 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 you know the the lights being cut, right, power going out, I, I usually use maybe like upstate New York as an example, and that would be a dangerous situation for people living in, in a place like Syracuse or Buffalo in the middle of winter. Uh, in a deep freeze, if all of a sudden, you know, the powers that be just decided to uh, cut the the lights, cut the power, that would be a dangerous situation. But uh, it's happening now in Texas. And, and we know it's been happening in California. Now it's happening in Texas. What happens when the entire eastern seaboard uh, goes dark? Could that happen? I think, yeah. So so I think preparing, right, is not being negative, not being, uh, you know, overly pessimistic, but but being aware of these possibilities and preparing now, you know, making sure you have pantries, right, a, a full pantry, learning how to keep a pantry, rotate a pantry, and, you know, prep what you eat and eat what you prep. These are skills that have to be developed. Uh, having water, right, having access to water. Not everybody has you know, a pond that they can build with, uh, you know, uh, 3 million gallons of water at their, uh, at the ready in some sort of grid down situation. So how can you prepare, right? In maybe a more urban area. Every time you go to the grocery store, it, it costs what, 89 cents to grab an extra gallon of, uh, uh, you know, bottled water, uh, store-bought water. I think we should all be doing this. So I, I, I don't want to, um, I don't want to focus on that anymore or, or make that the focus of this um, video, but, you know, I, I'm very concerned, just very concerned in general with the possibility of nationwide power outages, um, you know, and, and we see commodities rising. So, you know, food prices are definitely rising just in general, right? Uh, uh, oil and natural gas rallying right now. Um, this is going to be good for silver and gold prices. It'll probably support silver and gold prices, you know, the general CRB index going up. Uh, but you know, this is a, a manifestation of the, the uh, loss of our purchasing power, right? As they export the middle class, right? we can see this with the, the jobless claims. Um, and as they devalue our purchasing power, uh, you know, you're going to experience that. We all are going to experience that in, uh, higher commodity prices. Now, uh, speaking of commodities, I've got a couple more things I want to talk about here. We are going to talk about uh, how, you know, Democrats are, are actually discussing a, a stock trading tax. All right, well, we're going to get to that in a moment. But um, it, it, segueing into this uh, coming from commodities. All right, I want to talk about copper. All right, copper pennies specifically, coin roll hunting. So I, I've been sort of getting into this new, uh, this newfound hobby where um, you know I, I've set up a couple of different bank accounts and I can uh, go to a bank. Um, you know, I sort of started sampling what kind of rolls they had, and when I started finding silver nickels, buffalo nickels, uh, wheat pennies, uh, West Point quarters, right? I was like, well, I, I want to start doing more of this. So. Uh, almost on a daily basis now, I have been buying rolls of uh, nickels because there is still silver to be found. I have found a couple of 1942 uh, uh, silver nickels with the uh, S mint mark on them. Um, very awesome, but but also there's buffalo nickels out there. Uh, but uh, copper, right? Copper is still in circulation. You know, our pennies, 
Right now, they're made out of zinc. Okay, they're like 95% zinc with a small uh, copper plating. You can actually see cool videos online of people uh, taking the the zinc base out of the the, the penny and just leaving a, a shell. And, it, and it's seriously just like a little flake, right, of, of some sort of copper alloy. But but the pennies, right, that they used to be honest money. They used to be actually copper. And copper is a commodity uh, that is rising, right? It's a commodity that's rising in price. Right now, it's uh, uh, $4.15 a pound. It's up 2% today. Uh, it's up, I, I don't know how much uh, on the year and, and, you know, year to date, but but you know, the past year, you know, copper is rallying. Okay. Um, will copper ever become a precious metal? I, I can't say that. Uh, but what I can say is Peter Schiff, not only is he bullish on copper, but he encouraged getting penny rolls and, and hoarding the copper. He actually encouraged this. He did a podcast, I think about two days ago now, security regs and IRS audits targeting the rich will hit the middle class. It, it was an interesting podcast. He talks about, um, you know, the, the IRS and, and some, you know, the, the uh, resources they have to go after the middle class. Uh, but before he got into all of that, you guys got to check out this podcast. He talks about how copper cents Right now, these copper pennies, they're worth uh, more than double, okay? They're worth about two and a half cents in their weight in copper alone. So so right there, I mean, that is a 100% uh, 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 you know, gain or a 100% um, uh, you know, uh, upside that, that copper pennies have experienced, right? Face value is one cent, but, but in copper, they're, they're worth about 2.5. Like if you were to melt them down, it's about 2.5 um, cents worth of copper. Okay, um, what Peter Schiff said is that you know there is he actually encouraged coin roll hunting, get, getting uh, penny rolls from your bank, taking the copper pennies out, and hoarding them, keeping them. He even speculated that copper at one point, like these copper pennies, could be worth ten cents. They could be worth a dollar at some point in the future. Right? This is how this stuff works. As they continue to devalue the money. The, the honest money, the real money, is the hedge against the, the inflation, the hedge against the devaluing of the, the dollar. Just like when they got rid of uh, silver quarters and dimes, right? That silver mercury dime was, you know, you could buy a candy bar with that. You could buy two candy bars with that, uh, you know, 60 years ago. But now that silver dime, which its weight in silver is about two bucks, that two bucks what the dime is worth will still buy you a candy bar. And I don't think it's going to be any different with copper pennies. Okay. So what I've been doing is, uh, you know, saving all of my copper pennies. I, I go co coin roll hunting. I, I think it's a cool hobby. Not everybody has time to do this, but, um, you know, I, I, this is what I've been doing, picking up rolls of pennies. I find banks that actually still have copper. Now the copper is getting more and more scarce. Okay. Uh, it, it takes me about, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight rolls of pennies, uh, to get one full roll of copper, but sometimes I find wheat pennies, right, which are becoming more collect collectible because they're so old. Uh, Indian head pennies, they're out there. I haven't found one yet, but but you can buy these for for a, a small premium. Um, so these more collectible collectible pennies, uh, the older Lincoln cents, the wheat pennies, the Indian head pennies. Now, you know, some of these things are a hundred years old now, and, and there's now a premium. Right. If you want to get a hold of a, an Indian cent penny, you're going to pay a little bit of a premium for that. OK, um, just like you will with the the, the silver, <coughs> the silver uh, constitutional silver, the quarters and the dimes. you got to pay a premium for that. You're going to be paying by the ounce pretty much, the, you know, whatever silver is worth. Uh, and I think copper is going to move in a similar direction. I know it sounds silly, um, but, you know, imagine if. You, know, you were holding rolls of copper pennies, and instead of those rolls being worth 50 cents face value, they're worth a dollar, they're worth two dollars, they're worth ten dollars, right? This is where this is going. Um, and you can tell that the copper is getting more scarce, people are hoarding the copper. Um, it's becoming more scarce. It's not out there. Like a lot of these pennies, they're, they're the the zinc pennies. But but the zinc pennies, that that's not the honest money. That's the the, the fiat money, the devalued currency. The ultimate devaluation of the dollar is going to be when they move us to a completely cashless uh, currency. 
right? And then they can really just move the digits on the screen. I think the real thing, the cache, right? You're going to start to see, I know it sounds silly, okay? It sounds silly, but the cache, the real thing, you're going to see premiums on that, okay? To, people are going to hoard it. People are going to want the real thing. Um, and it might even become, you know, something of a, a, a collectible item. Uh, so that's why I, you know, I, I'm bullish on copper, but, but when I, and I'm bullish on copper pennies, all right, I have, uh, honestly, I have probably about, uh, I think about 12 or 13 rolls. Okay. So I'm working towards a whole box. My goal is right now is to try to, uh, in the next few months, get a whole box, uh, you know, $25 box of, uh, copper pennies. But when I heard Peter Schiff, uh, not only talking about how these pennies are worth double than what the face value is now, but that, uh, you know, actually encouraging people to do this, that, you know, that, that was kind of a confirmation for me that, uh, you know, th this is, uh, this is pretty exciting. Like we don't know exactly what's going to happen with commodities or what's going to happen with copper specifically. Uh, but could we see, uh, 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 you know, a time where, you know, one of these pennies actually costs about a dollar to get a hold of? Yeah, we could. And that's, you know, I mean, what is that? Like a, a, a hundred percent gain, right? Um, or no, I, I guess a thousand percent increase. I mean, it, it, it's it, a doubled would be two cents, right? So if a penny doubled in value, it'd be two cents. Yeah, so it's like a thousand percent gain or something, uh, maybe more than that. I, I, I'm not good at math, but um, you know what I'm trying to get across here. Okay, um, sounds silly, but you know I do believe that copper will increase in value. I believe that premium on even copper pennies. You know, one cent pieces as minuscule and, and uh, you know, worthless as they may seem to some people. I used to throw pennies out sometimes, right? If I had a handful of pennies, I just, you know, wanted to get rid of them or didn't want them. I'd leave them anywhere, throw them in the street. Like, I can remember that. Uh, but not anymore. I'm bullish on copper. Peter Schiff is bullish on copper. And, uh, you know, you might want to consider saving your copper pennies, looking for the wheat pennies. You know, just keeping a little stack of this stuff. Um, even if it's small, because uh, I, I think as the old Americana saying goes, stack your brass while you can, um, because you know what we're facing economically is, uh, for some people, it's going to be tragic. Uh, now, I want to talk about this real quick. White, this is from CNN Business. White House says stock trading tax is worth studying after the GameStop frenzy. As most of you guys know, they're having hearings now about GameStop and they're they're really uh, running this PSYOP for all it's worth or milking this PSYOP for all it's worth. Uh, the White House supports studying the merits of a financial transaction tax. A, more, a move favored by progressives and despised by Wall Street in the wake of the GameStop frenzy. So, of course, this is going to be dressed up like, well, well, we we want to, um, you know, we want to tax the the big wigs, right? Wall Street, Wall Street can afford the tax, but they're going to apply the tax to everybody. Peter Schiff kind of talks about this in his podcast, um, and this will be another way that they sort of cut out the average investor, that they cut out the average American from, uh, you know, financial upwards mobility uh, with these sort of. Uh, tax, uh, you know, financial transaction taxes. The GameStop situation highlights the serious issue of investor protection and market investor protection and market integrity, as if the government can protect the investor or keep the market the the market uh, uh, integrable. Is that a word? Um, you know, keep keep the markets integrity. The government is. Uh, really the problem, okay? The government is the reason that we don't have more of a free market. I mean, do we need some regulation? Maybe you can make the argument, but uh, we, we, we don't live, we don't have a free market uh, capitalist society like they claim that we do. Uh, the potential impact of a financial transaction tax, this article goes, goes on to say, on GameStop-like trading deserves additional study and can be part of a greater evaluation of such a tax for revenue and market stability, a spokesperson said. Now, some Democrats have backed a tax on stock trading as a way to raise badly needed revenue and address concerns about the health and financial market, about the health of the financial markets, right? So this is about the states and those cities 
You know, they shut down their borders, they shut down their um, uh, economies, and for months now, almost a year, they have not been collecting the kind of revenue that they used to collect. You know, that, that's why when, when we see these malls going out of business, when we see commercial real estate across the country empty, uh, you know, somebody, not only are, is, uh, you know, investors, private investors losing on, on this, but it's also the surrounding area, the, the city that that mall is in. Okay, that is a, a tax revenue that is no longer there, right? So as they lose the tax revenues, as the cities like New York and, and Los Angeles and these states lose their tax revenue, uh, you know, based on their own choices to shut down their own economies, they're going to come after you. They're going to attack you and I and start um, finding other ways to steal money from us to make up for the lost tax revenue, very scary stuff. Um, the fact that they're talking about financial transaction taxes, you know, as if they're not stealing from us enough already, as if they're not bending us over and, you know, ravaging our pocketbooks and our wallets um, enough. So uh, I'm, I'm very concerned with where this is going. Um, but the revenue is going to have to get made up somehow, right? Whether it's stimulus, inflation, uh, more just outright taxes. And when we talk about inflation, what we're really talking about is a tax. Inflation is a tax. It has a lot to do with uh, you know, trading, global trading, geopolitical uh, trading agreements. Uh, but, you know, they are. They're exporting the middle class, okay? I, they're pretty open about this. Um, and the jobless claims, the unemployment, this is how it manifests, right? The um, the real estate, the commercial real estate, just, you know, these empty lots. This is the exportation of America's middle class into other nations. And, uh, you know, they, they say, well, it makes the world more equitable and it makes the, the entire globe more equal. And, you know, uh, their justification really is based on some communist ideal that America's middle class should be spread out all across the globe. And, you know, there's going to be a tiny handful of rich people and just the masses globally are going to be, you know, poor and, you know, controlled by their governments. Uh, so, yeah, they are actually discussing even more taxes. Um, and, and like I said, they're going to dress this up as if they're going to wield it against the uh, big Wall Street guys. But those are the guys that can afford to pay the taxes. Uh, the real people that are going to be hurting are me, you, people who are uh, either investing or trading and 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 you know, th that see this as maybe one last ditch opportunity to acquire some real wealth in life. Um, you know, it, it looks like they're going to try to come after that. And, and I, I personally am very concerned about that because I have been enjoying trading. Uh, I haven't made a lot of money uh, doing it yet, but I definitely see it as an opportunity, you know, trading stock options as an opportunity for upward mobility, right? It's hard to predict the market, but uh, I mean, you can just look at a chart of some of these option contracts. I mean, if you nail one of these these trades, uh, it could change your fucking life, right? Excuse me for, you know, swearing, but it could really, you know, it, it could change your life if you got one or two, maybe three uh, really good moves, good trades, and, um, you know, didn't lose it, right? Because then you got to preserve the capital. It's one thing to make it, but then you got to preserve it. Uh, but because I trade stock options, you know, thinking about the possibility of a PDT rule when it comes to stock options, this is why I'm trading stock options because they're the PDT rule doesn't apply because it's a derivative of the uh, you know equity, right? You gotta have twenty five thousand dollars to trade day trade stocks with stock options that doesn't apply. So that's one reason that I'm trading the stock options. Another reason um, is that you know I see it as an opportunity to to kind of get myself um, you know a piece of the pie, so to speak. And, uh, you know, account minimums, uh, PDT rules, transaction taxes, definitely a huge concern. And, and we're going to see, I think, more false flags, more psyops like the GameStop psyop uh, to we're going to see more of that so they can justify the conversation and then eventually the legislation to actually crack down uh, on us and, and do this kind of stuff. Uh, one of the stocks that I am following is Square, right? The uh, Cash App. Square, uh, which I didn't know. The CEO is actually Jack Dorsey. 
Um, so not not a company I would invest in necessarily, but trading stock options, you know, it's very volatile. They actually have earnings that they're reporting. I think on Tuesday, the 23rd, they're reporting, uh, uh, you know, fourth quarter earnings and results. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm bullish, but Square has, has run up a lot. You know, same thing with PayPal. These stocks, these fintech stocks, uh, they're already at ridiculous valuations. But, you know, if we see... More stimulus talk this week from Janet Yellen. As long as we don't we don't have any major uh, you know economic catastrophes, if the Fed you know uh, says they're gonna you know uh, um, inject more stimulus into the markets, you could see these stocks like Square and PayPal go even higher, go to three fifty. I've already seen them go from like one fifty to uh, well actually under one fifty to there you know PayPal's at three hundred almost Square is almost at three hundred so we'll see I'll probably be trading Square um I like PayPal to trade I like Plug Power Workhorse any of these uh you know sort of new energy companies and uh, get yourself some copper guys go to the bank ask for copper pennies you know cost twenty five dollars for a box you can well, I, you know, you can get them for face value. You can get real copper pennies for face value. They're already worth double their face value in their copper melt. What happens when they're worth a dollar, right? I want to be hanging on to some of this. It's just a way to diversify. It's not all about silver. It's not all about gold. It's not all about stock. Not all about options trading. It's not all about cryptocurrency. It's not all about, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, cash and currency. Get some copper too. Diversify. Get some copper. I know it sounds silly, uh, but that's the way I'm thinking about it. So, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Give the video a like. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, your feedback is much appreciated. Big thank yous to everybody that's supporting me on Patreon. And uh, with that, until next time, as always, God bless.